Today we're looking at the all new HGLRC Forward F722 Mini Flight Controller. And we're going to be covering quite a lot today. So everything is in the timetables down below. You can skip to whatever part you need. And some of the things that we're going to be covering today is the accessories. And we're also going to be covering the breakdown of every component on this board for the advanced people and also the beginner people. And then we're going to go ahead and cover the overall connection setup like FPV camera, video transmitter, uh, receiver, and anything else you might need. Even the ESC setup since currently I don't think this one's provided in a stack form if it is i'll have that link down below along with this so with that being said let's see some of the things they do provide us in the packaging one you obviously get the flight controller itself you also do get a cable here this is silicone however what i really don't like seeing nowadays is these white colored ones i really would have loved to see them color coded because that just makes the process so much easier and you have less probability of installing a wire in the wrong place and possibly burning the flight controller so currently the two companies that are doing this are Diatone and hglrc so please give color coded wires it'll just make everybody's life easier especially for beginners here but again it is silicone so that's really nice and you're more likely going to have to cut this so you can solder up to an esc which we'll cover later in this video now they also do provide us with five rubber grommets these are m2 hole rubber grommets right here and they're not meant to go inside the flight controller they're supposed to sit under the flight controller and just provide it dampening they do give you five so that's going to be plenty enough here and they even provide us with some pin headers for some reason. I don't know why they're doing this, but you'll be able to solder the pin headers just like that on the sides. Not all sides, just like this side and this side. You can see whatever you want to use. And I'm guessing they're trying to make it also FPV wing friendly in a way. It's a nice little touch and it doesn't affect anybody's setup in any sort of way but it just adds a little extra functionality if you needed that now and again this is a 20 by 20 board so the mounting holes are going to be 20 by 20 and the holes are two millimeters so they're m2 holes here so keep that in mind and if you take a closer look here you see you're like oh what's that ugly thing right on top of the board well that's conformal coating and that gives it water resistance and again not waterproof water resistance and how does that work well first of all it's all over the board basically once you start soldering here wherever you solder that's going to go away but the way this works is, for example, you put your quadcopter into wet grass and water droplet jumped on, for example, the OSD section here, which bridged the 3.3 in the, in the ground. And since the conformal coating is right there, you basically won't short out your flight controller, which is something really nice. And that's what conformal coating does. However, let's just say you did solder your 3.3 volt in ground and water got right between them. Uh, you could probably fry and you know that happens with everything but the conformal coating here just adds a little bit of peace of mind and it's something really nice and it is an extra process also the design aspect of this as you can tell we have edge plating this is an expensive process which means they're actually putting some cash into the designing and also the manufacturing here which is again really really nice to see here so with that being said let's go ahead and jump into the breakdown Alright guys, so this is the part where we break down the board. However, it's going to be a pretty short one because there isn't that many components on this board. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now, this is the top view of the board right here. And this is how it should be installed in your quadcopter with that arrow pointing towards your camera, if you didn't know that. Um, and this is the bottom of the board here. So let's go ahead and make sense of this. So let's start with the top of the board here. So first of all, what we can see is we can see this little thing right here with a hole. And this is a barometer. And a barometer tells you the altitude of what you're flying. So that's really useful, if you're, especially if you're doing a GPS build and or an FPV wing. I think that's what they're going with this, to, to hit both markets, FPV wings and also the drones. And if we take a look at this big fat piece right here, this is a 16 megabytes of flash memory for black box log, which is really nice to see. Under this, we have the baby F7, which is the F722. Here, I'm guessing this is a diode for the USB. So if by any chance someday you plug in the USB, the board doesn't get power. But if you plug in the battery and it gets power, it could be due to this one if this is the diode that's being currently used for the USB here. And now if we go ahead and move down to the bottom side of the board, what we see is we have our on-screen display. Really nice to see. We have a resonator for the on-screen display here. This is our MPU 6000 gyro. If you ever wanted to salvage that for a later project, if you want to do my open hardware flight controller, for example, you can do that here and you can just salvage all these components, really. Uh, these are going to be for the, uh, what is it called, the OSDU. And the OSD chip usually takes four capacitors here. I don't know which ones exactly, but these are going to be, I think, 
bypass capacitors for the uh, for the gyro here. And what do we have here? We have our five volt switching regulator right there. This is going to be most of the circuit for the regulator. Probably some bypass capacitors for the uh, F722. It is pretty basic in features, but something really nice about the HLRC boards, they give you really big pads, especially if you're not good at soldering, which helps you solder much, much better here. Now, if we break down the connection setup, which we'll obviously cover in more detail in the next parts, there are a couple things that I really like here. So for example, we have in the market five volt video transmitters and seven plus volt video transmitters here. And they have you covered uh, right here on the left side where the video transmitter connects. Here, what we see is we have a five volt right there and we have a ground and then we have battery voltage. So this would be battery voltage. So if your video transmitter needed battery voltage, that's where you would give it from. And obviously here's your ground. And if you're five volt, you would take it from here. So that's a really nice design aspect just from the go. And this is where your signal for your video transmitter would go. And here would be your smart audio protocol or whatever protocol you're going to be using. Uh, that's where you're going to be putting it. And that's going to be a TX3 right there. So very simple, very nice. I really like that. And they have basically kind of a dedicated area for GPS right here. It's basically a UART with a five volt and ground. This right there, which is really nice also. Again, if you're going to be doing a GPS build, this would be a really nice uh, 20 by 20 flight controller here. And what's really nice about this also is it takes raw battery voltage. Power on the flight controller with anything from 3 to 6S uh, battery voltage, which is really, really great. Especially if you're going to be using some kind of a custom 4-in-1 ESC or an any ESC. You could just give this thing raw battery voltage and you'll be good to go. So that's also a huge benefit in this. And that's something you kind of really want nowadays. You want to be able to give raw battery battery voltage for your flight controller because it just makes it so much more universal or can be applied to many different applications. You don't have to use just that same stack ESC that comes with it. But it is always better to buy the stack together. Um, but if not, then, you know, this is a really nice thing to look out for. So raw battery voltage as power input for the flight controller is always really, really great here. So that's going to include it for the breakdown. Let's go ahead and jump to the next step. Now, in this part of the video, we're going to be covering the FPV camera. So in every FPV camera, there's three main wires that you need to look out for, which is the 5 volt or VCC it might be called ground and video. Those are the three most important wires in order for your camera to work. And the way they connect here on the flight controller, you can actually do two setups, but we're going to do the most recommended setup, which is powering an FPV camera from five volts. Very important so you don't get these weird lines when you're flying, which could ruin your overall flying experience. So a five volt pad would be this pad right here on the flight control. And I may also make sure you take note of the orientation here. So this pad right here is going to be five volts to power this guy. Now, if for some reason you wanted to give it battery voltage, they also have a battery voltage uh, power output here, which will give it the raw battery voltage. But again, it's really not recommended to do that unless you know what you're doing or you have some sort of a custom setup. But most like 99% of the cases, you should just power it off of five volts. Now the next wire over is going to be ground and they have a ground pad just right here for us, which is going to be right next to the five volts, which makes our life really, really easy. Now like this, our camera actually has power and is on, but what we're left with is the yellow wire, which is going to give our flight controller the video signal so we could process it and send it back to our goggles. And now where the video line goes is right here. So it's going to be on this pad. It's also making it very, very simple for us. So we're just going to go ahead and cross over. Boom. So we're going to call this the video line. So this is the video input. Usually they call them VIs or your cam or, you know, uh, they, they call them a lot of things. Vid sometimes. So on this flight controller, just calling it cam, which makes our life so much easier. So and just like that, your camera is completely ready and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, guys, so in this part of the video, we're going to be covering the video transmitter part. Now, the first thing to do before actually setting this up is you need to know if your video transmitter takes seven volts plus. So it could take nine to 26, whatever it is, it might, it's going to be seven plus volts and five volts only. So there's only two types in the market, ones that take more than seven volts and ones that only take five volts. We're going to cover both in this video. First of all, we'll start with the seven plus volts here. So if your video transmitter takes seven plus volts, that's the one we're going to start off with here. So something nice about this flight controller is it takes both into consideration in the design aspect. So if your video transmitter takes seven plus volts, then this is where you want to go ahead and grab your red light. And this is going to be battery voltage. So we're going to say seven volts plus, and this equals battery voltage. So it's going to be like that. So this is battery voltage powering on your video transmitter. The next wire is going to be ground here. Now the ground wire is going to be the same for both setups, whether you're five volts and ground, the only difference is going to be between the two video transmitters is the red wire. Now, if your video transmitter takes five volts, then you're going to want to take the five volt red wire from here 
and just install it right there. So we're gonna call this five volts. And again, a quick recap, if your video transmitter is seven plus volts, that's where you connect the red wire. If it's only five volts, that's where you connect the wire right here. So five volts only. So now we're left with two more wires. Only one is really the most important, which is going to be our video line. Now our video line is going to be this wire right there. And like that, you have your video transmitter perfectly set up, whether you're seven plus volt video transmitter or you're only a five volt video transmitter. Now, if you wanted to set up smart audio or IRC tramp protocol, if your video transmitter accepts those things, you'd want to set that up on this pad right here. Now, if you don't know what that is, it, it's not a really big deal, but later on, you might want to set that up because it'll allow you to change the channel and output power through your remote without having to press the button on the video transmitter, but you can totally live without in the beginning so you don't screw anything up. And this wire is on TX3, which would be you art three into the beta flights ports tab so that's where you would set up your smart audio or irc tramp protocol right there and i have a separate video on smart audio you can search drone mesh smart audio how to configure and uh, that should pop up and like this our video transmitter is basically set up so let's go ahead and jump into the receiver section all right guys so in this part of the video we're going to be covering both s bus and i bus receivers now there's something they share in common which is the five volt and ground wires these will go exactly in the same position whether you're s bus or i bus the only difference is going to be usually the signal wire which is the last wire however this is an f7 so in this case everything will go exactly identical whether you're ibus or sbus the only difference will be was once you configure it in beta flight and if you don't know how to do that i have separate videos on that so just put how to configure ibus in beta flight drone mesh or sbus and then you'll get to see those videos and it should cover just about everything you need so let's go ahead and start with the power so the five volt pad on this flight controller is going to be on the bottom right there and that's going to give your receiver five volts to power up whether you're ibus or sbus it's going to go in the same exact position which would be your red wire the next one over is going to be ground which is usually the black wire here and that's going to go all the way right here and that's where your ground would go so we'll call this ground and we'll call this five volts so now like this our s bus and i bus receivers have power the last thing is going to be the signal wire so for s bus it's going to go right there so let's just go ahead and move that right here and we're just going to have to cross over and we're going to connect that right there we're going to call this s bus now if you have i bus since this is an f7 flight controller it's going to go exactly in the same position. So iBus will also be connected exactly in the same position right here. And that right there is our X1. So you are one in your beta flights ports tab should have the serial RX enabled, which is a little checkbox. So if you enable that little checkbox and then for UART1, so we'll just call it UART1, then all you have to do is just choose whether you're using iBus or SBus in the configurations tab then save and reboot and you're good to go. And that basically covers the receiver. So let's go ahead and jump into the custom ESC part. So if you're using a custom 4-in-1 ESC, how would you go about connecting it? All right guys, so in this part of the video, we're gonna be discussing how to connect a custom 4-in-1 ESC. This will work on any other 4-in-1 ESC once you identify what each wire is on your 4-in-1 ESC and also your flight controller because they're always identical. Uh, however, the arrangement might not be identical, but the way they connect and the numbers are always identical. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's make sense of this. So for every ESC and flight controller connection, there's going to be power. It's VCC and ground. So this means battery voltage. And this is why it's important that I mentioned that this takes battery voltage because you can just give it power from here. And that's how they usually, that's how flight controls usually take their power. Now, other than the power, you also have the outputs for motor one, two, three, and four, as the name states. NC, if you ever see the word NC or the writing NC, that means not connected and it doesn't do jack shit really. So NC, you can always ignore. We don't need that. Current will always, there'll always be a current. Most of the time there'll be a current one. Sometimes there'll be the telemetry. If this is a BL Heli 32, however, this is a BL Heli uh, S. So we'll also cover if it has current, it's just going to be that green wire right there. So the first thing is to identify the power. This is the most important step because if you cross these, if you connect them wrong, you're either going to fry the ESC and you're more than likely going to fry the uh, flight controller. Like almost 99% of the time you'll fly, fry the flight controller. So you don't want that. So you want to make sure VCC is going to go into VCC of the flight controller. Now for the flight controller arrangement, here it is right here. You start with this bat. If you take a look at this bat, that starts with the VCC battery voltage. So that first wire is going to go to the VCC of your 4-in-1 ESC, just like that. The next one is ground. 
And after you set these up, you basically have power to your flight controller because the power comes in through this side of the ESC and, and then it gets passed on to your flight control like this. Now the next four wires are going to be the motor outputs. So for our flight controller, if you read the documentation, it goes one, two, three, and four. And those are just very simple. You connect one to one, two to two, and three to three, and four to four. And you just continue on. So here's two to two, and then we have three to three, which is right there, and four to four and that's it just like that now our motors are connected and also we have power so what's left is current current is going to be the current reading which tells you on your on-screen display how many amps you're using and how many amps you've used if you set that up so there we go we just grab our current wire and we stick it right there now this one also has an extra wire left over in the flight controller uh, you could connect this NC but I highly can I highly recommend you just cut that off but if you have a Beale Heli 32 ESC, then you're more likely going to have a telemetry uh, pad left over, which will connect to this R pad right here. So let's actually change the color here and let's just erase that a little bit. There we go. So yeah, there we go. And let's pretend this is a Beale Heli 32 and this was the telemetry then that's where you'd want to connect it just like that. Now for the telemetry input on this flight controller, it's on an R X six pad. So you art six in your beta flights ports tab will be in charge of the ESC telemetry under peripherals. That's where you would enable it. And you don't have to, if you wanted to, you can do that. I rarely ever do, but you can do that if you wanted to take full advantage of that. But the main wires are the power and the motors and the current's always really nice to know as well how many currents you're using or how many amps you're using. So it's always really nice to install that current wire. And, and these are the guys usually in charge. If you see these, then you know your, your 41 ESC is able to give you a current output because that's what's really uh, going right here. So that's going, passing it to that, passing it to the flight control, and then the flight controller makes sense of it and puts it uh, through your on-screen display and gives it down to your goggles. Very simple and very easy. This goes for everything except one thing, which is if your flight controller does not take battery voltage, this will fry your flight controller. And again, this one does take battery voltage, so we're safe, and that's how it's supposed to be connected. And again, everything is linked down below, so if you could check those out, those greatly support the channel. And I really hope you guys learned something today. And also, come join my Patreon. I do tons of giveaways, especially for my new Patreons of the month. For example, I got two. I'll do a separate giveaway between those two, and I do 10-plus giveaways a month on Patreon. So just win-win situation. Also have a secret shop, which is super awesome. And you also get access to all of my open hardware ESC, open hardware flight controller schematics, so you can design your own flight controller and go ahead and sell it. I don't have a problem. That's the whole idea of why I've done that. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.